So I just wanted to do a very quick review on my experience with restoring data from Backblaze. Um, I've been using Backblaze for probably about a year and a half since uh, Carbonite uh, decided to stop doing personal backups and um, I migrated to Backblaze. Back, the backup process is absolutely seamless, fine, constant backup. Um, I don't have to piss around too much with um, telling it which file types to back up and I just sort of set and forget it's, you know, it handles everything like that pretty well and doing restores of, of little bits of data here and there has been fine um, you know if I'm so if I'm somewhere else and haven't got access to my data I can log into their website trigger off a, a download it doesn't normally take that long to for them to prepare a zip file depends on the size um, and it's you know, encryption's good. Uh, it generally, web interface a little bit, a little bit outdated. It would be nice if they um, uh, improved that and made it a bit less uh, sluggish, a bit more responsive. But um, uh, over Christmas, I had a complete hard drive failure of a four terabyte hard drive, and needed to get all my data back. Uh, so I started going through the web interface um, and found that actually I was hitting their, their limit of, I think it's 500 gig uh, per uh, download. So uh, I could do, I could download it all, but I would have to go through bit by bit by bit and work out with all of the files that would add up to 500 gig, select all of those through the clunky interface and then download them and then repeat about four uh, well, maps times. Um, so that was not really a tenable situation. So I started looking at their other options. They offer a USB um, that I'd send to you. It's quite a reasonable price, but with that, uh, again, the li the limit size limit is not that big, so that really wasn't an option. So the next option was up to four terabytes um, could be sent on a on a hard drive. So I bit the bullet. I wanted my data back. I wasn't going to sit there and piss around trying to work out which files would total up to 500 gig. My files are not organized into neat little 500 gig uh, folders. And so I bit the bullet and ordered the drive. So it's cost me £182 um, for the drive itself. Um, you can return the drive for a refund. Uh, amongst that, there was a small uh, fee that you wouldn't get back, uh, the postal fee, which was uh, 50 pounds I think 50 dollars it might be um, so it was quite it was, suddenly it was a big outlay plus I had to buy a new hard drive as well so that was more outlay and then uh, then I ran into a little bit of a snag as well the, the web page to order the hard drive crashed whilst I was in the process so it looked like it had taken them well it did take the money but it didn't complete sending the hard drive I contacted their support. The support's generally been pretty good, but not not top notch. Like they could definitely improve. Uh, they said, "Oh yeah, it's fine. We can see it's processing." And then a couple of days later, I saw it. The backup, the restore job, rather, disappeared completely out of the interface. So emailed them again. Oh, sorry. Uh, you know, it was there when when we said it was there, but now it's now it's gone. Can you reorder again? So they reissued the money to me, but that takes three working days, and so then I had to order it again. So a lot of messing around, and suddenly I'm, um, you know, 360 quid out of pocket temporarily instead of just 180 quid out of pocket uh, permanently. Um, then, uh, so once that was done, I could see it in the interface. Uh, it said preparing, and I had a percentage of data restored, and it took ages it's taken i think it's took, taken more than seven days to actually restore the data to the drive and then once you get past the point where it's restoring and it's given you a percentage um that you can actually see okay right it's, pro it's progressing progressing oh and and it froze at one point and i contacted their support because i was like what you know, what's going on this is i think it's hung sort of thing what's happening um so once it finished 
building, then it goes to the section where it's encrypting and being sent to you and, and all of that process isn't, there's no progress marker for that. It's just, it's being prepared. Great, how long do I wait? <laughs> So I emailed their support a couple of times about chasing that and essentially all I could say was it's been prepared. It be, should be with you in X amount of days and so on. So bearing in mind my hard drive failed uh, Boxing Day or the day before, um, it's taken until uh, today, uh, no sorry, two days ago, 11th of January, to get the hard drive into my hands. And then on top of the 180 quid uh, for outlay for getting the drive and paying the postage. Uh, I've now, I've also because the drive's been shipped from the US. I've had to pay uh, thirty pounds import duty on it for a drive that I don't really even want to own. I just want to have and send back. So I've had to contact uh, I contacted FedEx to say, right, do I need to pay this because I'm not keeping the drive? I haven't bought anything. I've, I've bought a service. It's it's being sent back. They said, oh yeah, it's fine. Um, you just have to contact uh, the, ta uh, the imports, uh, exports, uh, duty office and inform them that you need this service and get the special number. It only takes about 90 days to do. Well, I need to send back the hard drive in 30 days if I want to get the refund, so that's not an option. Uh, so um, I've now contacted um, the support company as well, uh, so Backplay Support, to see if if I send back the drive and they get import duty at their end, uh, am I going to have to pay that as well? Because at some point it's going to get to the point where it's not worth sending the drive back and I just keep a four terabyte drive uh, to hand. So um, all in all, it's not been the most amazing experience of restoring. I thought, okay, I'm just going to click a few things. I've got a really fast internet connection. I'll just pull my data back down. It's going to take a while, but job done. No, 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 no. So, lesson learned is test your restore. Work out how what happens when you have a complete failure and how much that's going to cost you, how long that's going to take. Um, for me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be improving my resiliency in my computer. So I've got a resilient drive. So getting the data back isn't as critical as it was to me this time around. Um, and that way I, I don't have to pay for the hard drive. If there's something that I'm missing, it will be one or two files. I can pull them down through the web interface. Um, and I also have a little look around about uh, for other backup services. But at the time when I was looking around a couple of years ago, Backblaze was the kind of best bang for buck. Um, it's an unlimited backup for fairly small fee a year. Um, if I was to do the same with a service that puts it into, say, AWS, or even if I was to try and clunk something together to put it, put it in AWS myself, the cost um, for the data storage is, is quite high. And if I put it into Glacier, then I've got the you know, similar process. So I need to explore that one a bit, again, just to refresh my, um, my view on that and see if there's a, a better option. But um, I thought I'd share my experience with, with everyone to to just say, look, you know, headline is check what's going to happen if you need to restore all of your data, and if you if you do have large blocks of data, try and chunk it together into into kind of ways that you can say, actually, this is all my critical data. I can restore that in from the web interface within a day. It's five hundred gig, or you know, four blocks of five hundred gig, or whatever. Put it in folders that make sense to you and and plan for that restore basically. So that's uh, all I want to say, just to share that out there. Hope that's uh, useful to some of you. Bye bye.